Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. Today I'm joined by Bob Peace from Cloud Checker, where you're the Director of Engineering, right? Correct. So tell us about Cloud Checker. What do you do? Sure. Um, so our application is one that helps other organizations manage Amazon accounts. Cool. So when you say manage Amazon accounts, what kind of stuff are you doing with those accounts? Um, cost management, uh, right sizing recommendations, uh, security analysis. Okay, so you're essentially doing checks against customer accounts to make sure that they're properly secured, that their billing data is understood, et cetera? Correct. Okay, cool. So how many types of checks are you doing? Like what scale are you operating at? Yeah, so uh, our best pract practice check engine will run over 500 best practice checks against an environment. Oh, well, that's cool. I, I actually have a lot of customers who use Cloud Checker because it's kind of the definition of getting rid of undifferentiated heavy lifting, like we like to say it at AWS. 500 checks, if you had to do that manually, is a lot, right? Yeah, absolutely, especially if you have to manage multiple Amazon accounts within your organization. Yeah, for sure. So you're doing this on behalf of customers, so you need to get access to customer data that's not yes. your own. Um, how do you securely access customers' accounts to get that data in the first place? Yeah, so we ask our customers to create an IAM uh, role for us. Um, we then use cross-account roles to actually make API calls to their Amazon accounts to collect that data. Okay, cool, so cross-account roles with IAM, and then I guess the customers can refine the policy to really have fine-grained control in terms of what you can and cannot see, right? Yes, 100%. Um, we have a lot of documentation around what that IAM policy should look like for you to get full coverage within Cloud Checker, um, but we also call out things that you do or don't need, depending on what your use case is. Okay, so you get this access via policy through cross account roles or other mechanisms with IAM. Um, once you reach in, how are you actually gathering that data? Yeah, um, so these EC2 instances here, these are workers. These will make API calls out to the customer's Amazon account. It will then uh, store that data in SQL Server housed in RDS. Okay, so I mean, I personally know a lot of customers who use your product, and um, I think you target a lot of enterprise customers, so that's going to be a lot of data. Give us an idea of scale here. You know, you're running RDS SQL Server. How much data do you have in these databases? Sure. So we have over 300 RDS instances um, with a total of 550 terabytes of allocated storage space. Wow, okay, that's a lot of data. But <laughs> so you have RDS SQL Server, um, obviously Microsoft in the cloud. Are you also running Windows Server over here? Yes, we are. Okay, so these workers are .NET services, or what's happening yep. there? Each, of the, uh, each worker, individual worker, is a Windows service installed on a virtual machine. Written in C Sharp. Written in C Sharp. Okay, very cool to see sort of enterprise Microsoft workloads on AWS. So you have these Windows services talking to, or, or workers rather, gathering the data, putting it in an RDS, sort of at scale, managing that at scale. How do you determine the right, you know, something I see customers struggle with is how big their RDS database should be, the instance sizes to use. How do you right size for your customers? Yeah, so when you come in and sign up with an evaluation for Cloud Tracker, you're actually assigned to an empty database okay. within RDS. Um, after you, we've collected some data, we go and do an analysis on your account, um, and we then assign you to a specific tier. Um, and a tier for us is a specific RDS configuration. Okay. Uh, we then migrate your database from one RDS instance to another. So you basically do analytics to, to figure out how the customer is going to use it and then? That's right. Okay, that's cool. And so I imagine you can also change it as time evolves. Yes, absolutely, which is one of the benefits of RDS, right? Being able to change those configurations on the fly. Yeah, I was going to say, it's kind of the ultimate ephemeral cloud use case. It's yeah. perfect. So you also have S3 up here. Are you using yeah. that for backups, or what are you using it for? Yeah, so uh, when we actually have to migrate a customer from one RDS instance to another, we write that back up to S3 and okay. import it to a new RDS instance. Okay, cool. So customers have to interact with this data, view it, or download it in some ways. So I assume you're not just letting them access the RDS database. Tell us about how you make this data available to customers. Yeah, that's a great question. So our RDS instances have to manage over Three or 30,000 um, active database connections over a 24-hour period. So there's a lot of workload happening yeah. in these RDS instances. Um, so in order to ease that strain for the front end, once these workers have collected this data, they actually generate an XML file and write that into S3. Okay, so it's almost like materialized views in a way. But That's correct. Okay, so that way you can have sort of a snappy experience. Is this like a website or API or both? Or? Uh, both, actually. So we do have a f uh, website um, that sits in IIS, um, and we also have an API, a REST API. Cool, and how often are you generating these sort of snapshots, these, these XML data files? Yeah, so once a day our workers will go and inventory your Cloud Track or your Amazon account. Okay, cool, so that sits in S3, then customers either interact with it by a web interface or API, and that way they're not putting sort of undue load on these RDS databases that are doing a lot of work already. Yeah, absolutely. 
Very cool. Well, I like how you're using IAM with cross-account rules and policies to provide that sort of fine-grained, secure access to customer accounts. It's nice how you're offloading some of the database load to S3 and doing that sort of pre-generated reports. Uh, I love how you're using enterprise Microsoft workloads on AWS. We always say that um, it's a great place to run Microsoft workloads in the cloud is AWS. So nice to see SQL Server at scale. It's a nice architecture. Thank you. Thanks for sharing it with us. Of course. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture. <laughs>